How or when do you see the Green Party being a competitive third party option? In 2016, the Green Party did win 1.07% of the vote. So do you think the Green Party is going to be more than just what some consider a thorn in Democrat side and be an actual competitive third option? Well, I think we clearly are. And if you look at the way that the agenda of uh, progressive Democrats changed, for example, because we were in the race in 2012 and 2016, basically our agenda was then adopted by the progressive Democrats and arguably by the Democratic Party, although more in just uh, in name only, not in substance, and things like the Green New Deal or healthcare as a human right, um, you know, a, a $15 uh, living wage, which would now be more like twenty dollars, you know, the these issues, um, shall we say, were clearly they won the day. The issues won the day. Or student debt, you know. Remember, I was being ridiculed by John Oliver for um, proposing that, you know, that that students deserve a a. Um, you know, a level playing field when they move out into the into the world of the economy and not to be carrying around tens of thousands of dollars. And in the case of, you know, healthcare professionals, for example, you know, and uh, attorneys, you're, 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 you know, it's just the costs are, are totally off the chart. Um, so those kinds of ideas really entered. You can look at healthcare as a human right. It was Ralph Nader, Ralph Nader, who actually moved that into public discussion. I, you can go way back to the socialist parties in the in the 1900s when, you know, Social Security and Medicare and um, uh, you know uh, occupational health and safety. I mean, the most basic right, the 40 hour week, actually, you know, going back to the early 1900s. These were things that we had to find even um, uh, the abolition of slavery, remember? That was moved by the abolition party, which was also ridiculed and criticized for being this idealistic fringe party, which totally changed history. And then it actually evolved into what is now today's Republican party. So this is more of that, um, what do we say? That, that kind of nonsense that's used to try to vilify, to disparage and to just wipe out political opposition. That is not what democracy is about. And the situation that we are in now broadly as a society where nearly 70,000 people are dying every year from lack of health care, where half a million people are out living on the streets, you know, where 60 some percent of people are living paycheck to paycheck, where the environment and the climate are totally going up in flames right now. You may be aware that the Colorado River system is in dire straits because of climate change. Now, what does that matter to anybody who's not in Colorado? Well, that river system feeds the, the entire California agriculture system, which provides half, a full 50% of the fruits and vegetables for the entire nation. So we are all taking it on the chin with climate change and it's going to get much worse because that, uh, that Colorado River system <clears throat> is very close to shutting down because of the lack of water that can't make it over the, uh, over the dam. So, you know, and that's just like one area. Um, this is hitting us all very hard, these crises on which we are not moving forward, we're actually moving backwards. So. It's not like, you know, third parties and the things that Dr. West talks about are not uh, incidentals. They're not academic issues. This is about whether, you know, whether we survive, whether our children have a future. If you look at what the younger generation is thinking and feeling right now, it is totally shocking and alarming. It's somewhere around half who describe themselves as hopeless. Um, a large percentage, it might be 60 or 70 some, say that the two major parties have absolutely betrayed them and they are terrified at their future. And a large portion, I believe it's 25%, are saying that um, you know they are considering self-harm on a regular basis. This is not what a survivable future looks like. We need substantive and transformative change will not come from the parties that are funded by the economic elites that are served very well by the current system. 
and that's who funds our two major corporate political parties. So change is not for somebody else. Change is for everyday working people, the poor, the marginalized, the middle class, which is you know shrinking by the hour. Uh, this is about us and whether or not we have a future. And I must say that the things that we've been talking about as Greens for you know as long as we've been involved in in uh, national elections and by the way greens aren't just involved in national elections most of our candidates are elected at the local community and occasionally at the um, legislative level but you know that's where people hear from us largely and that's where we come to broader public attention our agenda for uh, decades has been the agenda that has increasingly become you know the really critical issues that we must contend with. Greens have been on the money here for a long time and we continue to be and that is resonating in an increasingly powerful way in uh, Dr. West's campaign.